Welcome back everybody. Here we go again with a completely new base model. This time it's coming from Black Forest Labs. These guys are sort of like, um, you know, their lineage traces back to the original stable diffusion. I'm not going to go too much into that. I'm sure there's plenty of videos explaining all about the history of who these guys are. It's all written here. Link will be in the description. Blackforestlabs.ai and they have brought out a pretty cool new base model called Flux 1. Now, don't be afraid. The size of the files do make it look like you probably can't run it, but there are ways of quantizing the model. The FP8 mode does reduce the load by about half. So I've been hearing reports of people running this on 16 gigabyte. Um, it remains to be seen who of you lot will be able to run this on smaller than that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how we're going to get it. So first of all, the best place to get the instructions I found, I'm going to write these up on my article, but it'll be a retype of this. I took the T5XXL FP8E4M3FN. Try remembering that early on a Sunday morning. And uh, clip L, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the text encoders first. So that would be the clip L and the t5 xxl fp8 now the fp16 is going to be more uh accurate however it's twice the size so you know if you haven't got lots and lots of vram probably best to stick with this one all right and then the next thing we're going to need is the vae and the vae is 335 megabytes you can download that one the link will also be in the uh workflow pack right so all the links will be in the uh, installation section at the bottom. So click show more and go all the way down. And then lastly, we're going to need the Flux Schnell. Now you think, well, why didn't we get Flux Dev? And you could have done, but this is the non-commercial, right? Now I'm going to look at that separately. So we're going to look at Flux Schnell. So it's a four-step model, all right? And they go into models UNET. Now before we look at that, just remember... The clip L and the T5 XXL, they go into models clip in your comfy. And then the VAE obviously goes into models VAE. Now, when we load the model, it's going to be selecting FP8 mode. All right. Now, I just keep going down. So then we're going to have a look at the actual weights. There we go. 23.8 gigabytes. So it should come down to just under 12, but then the text encoder pushes it over. So it's like, ooh, it's, it's, it's a tough one. So what we'll do here is download this one, and that one is going to go inside models unit. All right. So we should be good to go. Once you've got those things in the right place, then we'll be able to load the model. And look at this. This is just stunning. The one-to-one -one crops look amazing. So the, the close-up detail is really good with this model. It's really quite stunning. So what I've done for you guys now, there was an early access model, uh, early, early access version that's came out in the inside line in the Discord. So go ahead and join up on the Discord if you want to get things a little bit quicker. Generally, I build out these workflows and I have to test them. And if it took 36 hours, I'm guessing it was a popular download because there was a big old queue. It took ages, but we got the model. Works great. So... Let's take a look at the back end first. So the first thing, load diffusion model, flux schnell dot sft, fp8 e4 m3 fn, and then here is our clip in the dual clip loader. We have clip l and we have the t5 xxl fp8 e4 m3 fn, which is matching as you can see there. I've set a reference to flux and I've set a reference to the dual clip, and then I've put the the vae set a reference to that and then finally the noise seed and set a reference to that okay so now we can move down to the text to image or image to image choice so if you have um text to image you would pick your aspect size and that's interesting i wonder why it's doing that hang on a minute we found a boog it would have worked, but, you know, that's better. That's not being called by anything. That's being called by stuff. So anyway, just a small thing there. I wonder, ah, I see. So what we really want to do here, actually, is to 
decide which one we're going to use. So that's a slight oversight on my part. I should basically be driving it with one. We'll get rid of the one we don't need. Drag that up there, and that's now fixed. So just to explain why I had to fix that quickly, um, it was creating a second reference rather than using the same reference. And because I can only call one of them, I may as well just use one. Why have two? Uh, makes sense to just call them the same. So you set your aspect ratio, right? Um, and then, then if you have it on text to image mode, it just makes an empty, la empty latent of that size. All right. Um, and then the latent is called, called text to image latent. That goes into input one. So if we have selected image, uh, select one, it's going to be in text to image mode, which is what we'll put it in now. And then for the groups, we will select base sampler, which is this is going to use text to image or image to image to image. And then obviously, as I say, if you chose image to image mode, it's going to uh, take the image that you've put. Do fill crop on the aspect ratio which you've chosen with and then uh, encode that with flux and set that to the image to image latent and then as i say you can change that there now i might improve this you know i'm i'm just coming up with new ways because the last big workflow pack didn't actually have image to image support and i think this is a way i can add image to image support easily so then you just have a swap you just have a mode switch um but I'm always trying to improve the workflows and make them a little bit more accessible. So if I can make it easier to use, I will. But for now, this is how I'm going to do my text to image or image to image mode. Right. So over here, we have the actual uh, sampler. And this is just a reference version of the default workflow. Okay, so there's no tricks here. This is just a standard workflow. Um, and what I've done is I've set the denoise to 0.75. We take a look at the image I used. There's the image I used. And then if we take a look at the prompt that I used, it is the standard prompt that came with the workflow, a bottle with a rainbow galaxy inside of it on top of a wooden cable table on a table in the middle of a modern kitchen. And the thing is that when we put it on 0.75, four steps, simple Euler, it has put the bottle on, well, <laughs> it's tried to make it at wood, like driftwood, I guess then it's retained the rest. So this is quite an interesting little thing. Um, it wouldn't have normally done something like that with the previous diffusion model. Um, so this is actually really amazing. Uh, okay, so yeah, so just, just to point that out. So what have we done? We have the base sampler, which we can turn on and off. So obviously when you're doing upscaling, you probably turn off the sampler, so you're not just generating more, more, more images. Um, and we also have the ability to change between text to image or image to image mode. All right, that's that. And then this is a pretty standard affair. Now, what you can do, just like the sampler garden in the previous packs, is you can copy all of this, paste it here, and then change the stuff. So here we go. I'll show you that now. So if I just grab a copy of this, paste it here. Now, Bear in mind that wherever it sets a reference, so for example, set image base out, it's going to now say set image base out zero to stop a conflict, right? So if I was to change this to um, sampler alt one, right? So it's like, I know what that is now. I can call that anywhere where it's being called. All right. Anyway. So let's just try a different sampler. Let's try CFGPP with SGM Uniform and just let's just see what happens. I've, I haven't tried this with this yet, so that'll be cool. All right, so the seed should be, it's on randomized, so we'll get a new image. Let's see what happens. Um, so this is a basic workflow, text to image, and oh God, that's a complete disaster. Look at that. <laughs> Okay, well, that was just a complete disaster. Okay, I think I've broken something somewhere. Ah, I know what I've done. Look, see? I'm in image to image mode right now. So, it should be fixed when I, yeah. Okay, it's not like the best image in the universe, but. Oh, gosh, look at the tiling. That's nice. <laughs> How did I break the tiling? Is it because the aspect ratio? Ah, yeah, let's see. 
we're doing a tall image into a wide image. So I'm doing stupid things. Let's just go to uh, four to four because it's one to one. Makes it quicker. I'll run it again. So what's this? It's going to do that one. Oh, wow. Look, it's put a big old glass bottle there. That's crazy. <laughs> and then over here, we've got an even bigger glass bottle. So this is obviously a nicer setup for this model than whatever the hell I'm doing. You know, I would say this is a bad setup, right? And then we'd have to tweak it figure out what the hell why is it not working but yeah essentially look at that okay so we've got our glass bottle there now interesting is that just a different seed i think it is just a different seed let's do another one and then again if i was to then put it back to mode one then i would probably put it to one on the d numbers okay look at that it put all of the stuff up there interesting how it's affecting the generation all right let's do another one so we're going back to text image mode what the heck <laughs> see that looks bloody amazing on eula simple but it seems like some of the other samplers are bad news that's okay like i said i haven't tried these so how about what about if we try the old dpm m 2m Paris? Try that. What does it do? It's always fun when a new model comes out to try and find out what's good. And, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> so I think it'll take a while for people to experiment and see. But that's the whole point of having a comparison. You can just quickly do like this, and seed for seed. Uh, no, that's certainly not good. So it might be something to do with this, but whenever I try to use um a normal k sampler without this basic guider business it doesn't really work very well so i think that's something unique to this model i wouldn't be surprised so it would be nice to see some uh more support for the rest of the comfy and you know because comfy kind of has an ecosystem and we all sort of do things in a specific way and i don't know if this will become exposed to you know if i run a k sampler right here right just a standard you know there's a few things that are obviously different here the first thing is it's using sigma not noise which obviously could be converted um but then there's also the guider and guider seems to be taking the place of uh positive and negative conditioning and i think cfg as well it's maybe it's like a combination i don't i don't i haven't read up on it um but there's two ways it'll go. Either we'll get something to enable us to plug it into the normal case sampler ecosystem, or there will be, you know, um, new sampler custom or new, you know, which come with the guider. I don't know which way it will go. So time will tell. That's all I had to say about that. So let's move on to the upscaler because that's a fun piece as well. So I've only done stage one. Stage three blows up my 4090. Okay, so um, it's probably too big for most people. And also with stage two, only certain aspect ratios could squeeze in. Square would, would probably overload my, my system right now. So I only use the stage one. But it is a native tiled up scaler. It does its best to do what we were doing before with this system. So it's a bit weird because there are no upscalers that support guider. Now, maybe there's a way to like manually build that out, but I it would take me all day to mess around with. So instead, what I've done is I've done a 768 by 768 um, tiled VA, VAE encode decode with uh, 0.2 denoise, okay, using the image. Where is it? Yeah. Using the input image, we encode it and we do our thing. So we, yeah, and, and then and then basically we do the color match and then upscale it by two. So this isn't actually upscaling. It's just doing image to image with very small denoise and then you scale it up. And then the idea is that um, every pass does the same thing. It takes the image from the last stage uh, does the point two denoise and then 
makes it bigger again and obviously it sort of gets gets to be like too much memory by the end of it but um who knows there might become ways of running this even more efficiently so we'll see but like i said it's a good upscaling process and it works with the color match remix mode so obviously if you want to do color match you just drag your upscale image into the reroute and that's setting the color match this is setting the actual image you want to upscale um so obviously for color mix you just put any image that you want into there and you know then you've got a different image supplying your color match which is how you get those remix images it's kind of like a cheap man's color correction because it sort of like does the whole thing in one go with no sliders or any kind of control but sometimes it can be a nice effect um you can get like an hd look if you have a high contrast photograph things like that it'll sort of clone the look it's not really a lookup table like proper color correction but it does give you access to some kind of controlled um you know uh, uh they call them looks so it's the look of the image right and like i said i used this image with this image and that gave me this image now obviously you get that in an editor and turn the saturation down and that's going to be quite interesting because it's blown out right now overexposed but it's easy to control that right whoops so that's the long and short of it i love the model it looks great all the images that i've made with it have been amazing but i know it's early days so uh, if you come to this channel for the first time welcome thanks for joining um if you are uh have been here for a while you probably know that when a base model comes out we do the basic workflow and then we start adding new workflows to the pack as things come along so we don't know how long it'll take or even if there will be a control net for this model i would hope so uh same with ip adapter but it all depends on contributions from people in the community so these things take time so um like i said you want to get off you want to you want to get in and use this text to image image to image and upscaling that's all good to go so with that that's the workflow in the pack and then we'll get new versions done as new features arise i don't think many people have done a native upscale with it yet uh, i'm sure you've seen plenty of workflows by now but um these are basic workflows if anybody wants like a simpler workflow obviously the example workflow that's supplied with comfy will also be in the pack but that's just that's just included so you've got a clean example that hasn't got any of my improvements on it all right so that one's made by comfy anonymous but um sometimes we'll include the basic stuff when we get started so you've got an idea of what's going on all right so that's everything i wanted to show you so it took a while to download this base model and in that time i have actually built an entirely new pack for sdxl so that one will be coming out soon and uh thanks for watching and i'll see you next time so memberships are here i've added donator and member the donator membership is just uh you want to support the channel help us grow member you're going to get some exclusive video access so look out for the upcoming date and uh, check out the join now button for more information